classical counterpart. We say every gate, right? Maybe not the phase shift gate, but most of the gate we have seen now have a classical counterpart. And how do we define the gate? We define how it transforms, how it rotates the basis vector, right? So what does a Hata Hadama gate do? Again, we define in this way. For one QP Hadama gate, we say H operates on zero becomes one over square root two, zero plus one. Is that okay? Do you have classical counterpart? No, right? You have a register which is zero, and you do an operation, it becomes zero plus one. In the classical computer, we say your computer has error, right? You don't know only 50% is zero, 50% is one. And we know this is what? Plus state. Or you can say it transforms zero to plus. How about when you apply the harder market to one? By definition, right? In principle, you should know, you should not know how to answer this question if you have not learned it. It transforms to zero minus one. So, which is negative, right? So this is the definition, like what we have been doing for other gates. In order to do this, of course, I will just put a matrix and I claim that this is the matrix, right? All you need to do is just check it. Let's check if this is correct. For example, how do my gate apply to zero means it is one over square root one 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 negative one apply to zero what is zero again one zero when you measure zero what happened <laughs> not related to it. when you measure zero states what happened you get a zero okay remember okay so <laughs> just like the same basis <laughs> exactly i mean measure in the zero and one basis good point <laughs> okay, what is this? 1 times 1 plus 1 times 0. 1 times 1 plus negative 1 times 0, right? This is 1, 1, right? Which is equal to plus. Is that okay? Right, so you can track yourself again similarly. H applied to 1 equals to square root 1 negative 1, right? You can check it. I won't check. I won't show you here. But here, I hope you can memorize. Memorize the definition. Why do you need cheat sheet? Memorize it. It's easy for you compared to other classes. Right? You know, E124, you need to memorize the output impedance of common gates with degenerate, common source with degeneration. That's much more difficult, right? This is easy. 1, 1, 1, negative 1. Memorize it. Okay. Yeah, I do want to say one thing about the inverse of the Hadamard gate, right? So, inverse means what? The reverse direction. And it happens that inverse of the Hadamard gate equals to Hadamard gate itself. Okay, so if you have a circuit that starts with Hadamard gate and followed by inverse, it's just the same as two Hadamard gate. Okay, so let me prove to you that it is true. First of all, of all we also take this opportunity to review how to find the inverse of a matrix. The inverse of matrix is one over the determinant of the matrix. This absolute value means determinant. It's okay, you forgot what is determinant. You can always Google. And then inside the matrix, you have this so-called cofactor and minor. Negative one I plus J. And then the M I J transpose, right? Let's write it down first and then I will define this to you. 
I make it uh, so complicated because this is the general expression for the inverse. It might be useful when you do two qubit or more. We won't use that much, but I want you to be aware of this complexity of the inverse. For uh, two by two matrix, it is easy, right? So what is that? First of all, let's find the determinant. The determinants uh, is also complicated, right? But for two by two, it is easy. The determinant is what? One, let me just remind you, the Hadamard gate is one over square root two, one, 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 negative one, okay? So the determinant is one over the square root two. And how do you do it, remember? Very good. Right. It is one times negative one minus one times one, right? You go in this diagonal minus the diagonal in other direction. And this is equals to negative square root two, I believe. Right? Because this is negative two. Is that okay? I will slow down a little bit. Is that okay? Uh, what do you think? Yeah, minus 2 over root 2 is what? 2 divided by root 2. Negative root 2, right? Okay. Good. Okay, so then, what is the meaning of this guy? This is talking about the i and j elements, right? i row j column. Okay? First look at m0,0. Zero, zero. How do you find it? The way you find it is just draw a line. Maybe uh, let me show you. You do this. 0, 0 is where? This is 0, 0, right? So you remove this guy, remove this column, okay? And then you find out the determinants of the rest. Okay, so this is negative one. How about M01? Let's look at it again. What, which one is our target? Zero one, this one, right? Remove this row column with this row, so this is equal to one. Zero row. Yes, you're right. That becomes one one. I'm sorry. I should. Yeah. Thank you. So still one. Okay. Yeah. Why is the first one? Because uh, you remove this row and this column, you only have negative one left. M10, what do you get? One zero, this is one zero, right? So you get one, the one is left, okay? And eventually, M11 one, one equals to, what is M11? One, one? That is the mistake I made just now, right? It's one. Okay? Mm, say again. Oh yeah, uh, again that is typo, not half. That should be square root two. Yeah, and then I, I, I think I miss a lot of stuff. Hold on. Sorry. So so I miss a lot of stuff actually. Um sorry for that. So should not be one, right? Should be
1 over square root 2. So that's 1 over 8. Is this okay? Because this is the the whole matrix, right? The whole matrix is one over square root two, right? You can just put one over square root two inside instead of one. I missed the one over square root two. The whole thing is wrong. Okay. Yeah. If I did not have this one over square root two, I was right. Negative one one one, right? But now I have one over square root two, so I need to multiply by one over square root two. I make the mistake. First of all, it's 1 over square root 2, not 1 over 2. So you're calculating the whole expression? Before what? The whole thing. Yeah, the whole thing. Yeah, the whole thing. No, I'm not talking about, only talking about MIJ. Yeah, MIJ. Okay. That's how you find the uh, minor. Okay. Okay, so then what is the result? One over, this one is one over, I hope I'm right. <laughs> one over, because now it's completely different from my cheat sheet. Uh, negative square root two. Good, thank you. This is okay. One over h. Right? One over negative square root two. You need to be very careful. I also saved the transpose. I don't do it yet. The first one is zero plus zero. So this negative to the power zero. Right? The second one is negative one to the power one. Negative one to the power one. Negative one to the power two. Right? For this cofactor. Okay? And then what is Mij? Negative 1 over square root 2. 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 Right? Because this is 1 over square root 2 from here. And I also don't need to do the transpose because obviously they are symmetric. So this transpose can be gone when I swap them. So I'm going to take out negative 1 over square root 2. Okay. And I think I really make a mistake here. The Hadamage, let's check, right? The Hadamage determinant is the this time negative one minus one. So it's negative two. So negative square root two. So I put negative square root two here. Yeah, one over square root. Yeah, but I think that I, I couldn't understand. Yeah, but but the matrix you just think about should put the one over square root two inside, right? Uh, just a uh, factor it out. The whole matrix is one over square root two. Yeah, in my cheat sheet, I did put this as negative one, but but that it looks like. What did I do wrong? Maybe we do. No transpose, you just switch. I still have one over square root two. Supposed to look like this one. Yeah? 
Yeah, if I take this one over square root two, negative one out, right? Then this become two, right? This negative one over square root two, they all take out, right? And I take negative out, so this is one. This is also one, because this is negative, this one is negative, right? Then uh, it should be equal to H, but... So I think it's the That's right, but no. is it... I do something wrong about the determinants or something? Uh, one times negative and minus one times one, negative two. Yeah, I did something wrong, very wrong here. The determinants is not this way. It should not be calculated in this way. Because this one over square root two should go in, okay? So I did something very wrong. I cannot take out this one over square root two, okay? I need to put inside. So that's what happened. All right, so I should put this as one over square root two, one over square root two, because this is the matrix, correct? So this becomes one over square root two times one over square root two, uh, which is minus and minus one over square root two times one over square root two, right? I was missing one over square. So this one give me what? Uh, minus one, thank you. Right, so this is one, one over minus one. And this is, if I take out the stuff, it's one over square root two. Right, so this is H, right? I'm sorry for wasting your time, but maybe you forget this. I don't expect you to do this in the exam. You don't need to know this because it's easy to forget. You can Google when you need it. But I really hope you to learn all this problem. Do not like what I'm doing here, right? It looks so straightforward to me to factorize one over square root out, but it is not. So in the future, when you do this type of program of calculation, be more careful. Don't make the mistake that I'm doing. So my, my, my cheat sheet was wrong, but two wrongs make one right. So my result was correct. That was wrong here and wrong here, but now everything is correct. Yes, usually uh, I only grade based on answer. I only check the step if the answer is wrong. <laughs> okay, this a uh, hint. Okay, very good. Uh, I think we learned something. Just be careful. We learned that we need to be very careful when we play with the matrix. All right, good, right? So, but I don't require you to do anything, but hope you change this skill because in the future you do linear algebra forever, you need to be careful, right? But the main point, the only thing you need to memorize for this class is the inverse of the Hadamard gates equals to itself. Okay, very important. Now we want to look at some uh, very uh, terrible math, but very important. When I apply a Hadamard gaze to n qubit, what happened? I already know that when I apply the Hadamard gaze to uh, to one qubit, it becomes a superposition, right? What if it is uh, n qubit? What does it mean? In n qubits of zero, it means, right, in an n qubit, we have Hadamard gaze, I'm going to write in this way, tensor product n times. It means nh, not n tensor product, right? It means I have h, tensor product h, tensor product h, tensor product h, and I have nh, okay? I have nh, okay? And then, of course, I, I, some people write it in this way. That's also okay. It means nh, not n tensor product, okay? You only n minus one tensor product, right? And this is, uh, what kind of space is this? I have n, what's the space? To the power n, d space, right? 
or is the c to the power n space okay so i have a function i want to know what it is when i apply the Hadamard gaze to the zero stage of this high dimensional space that is the question here can you guess what would it be actually If we apply to zero, it becomes zero plus one. Now I apply to n zero, what would it be? A hint is about superposition. Superposition of what? Zero to? Zero to zero, one, two, three, four. All the basis states, okay? In a one dimension, we apply to zero, it forms a superposition of all basis states. In a two to the power n dimension, right, uh, n qubits, it, it applies to all the basis states. That, that I'm going to show you, right? So what is this? Again, we know very well this one is nothing but what? I just write it out clearly. So the so called n zero is the tensor product of n0 and that's why for each of the operator you must only apply to the corresponding space right the first electron the second electron the third electron all the way to the nth electron right is that okay we talked about Hilbert space before right you apply the operator to individuals of space and then you do tensor product, it's the same as you do the vector tensor product first and then apply the overall operator to that composed vector, right? That is what I'm doing here. But now know very well what is n, hn, right? What is that, remember? Anyone remember we just learned? Yeah, yeah, but I apply the h to zero, what will it be? Becomes a linear combination, yes. Right? This is the first qubit. And this is the second qubit. And you will do the same thing for all qubits, all the n qubits. Make sense? And then what do you do? Just do a tensor product across them. You obey the uh, so, uh, distribution law, right? How many 1 over square root 2 do we have? Huh? N only. So it says I can write as 1 over 2 to the power what? N over 2 because it's square root, right? So it's divided by 2. 1 over 2 to the power N over 2. Now let's look at what are the possible combination. I can have zero times zero times zero all the way times zero, right? I will just write it out. Right? I also can have zero times zero times zero and then the last one I times one. And similarly, I can have 0, 0, 1, 0. And basically, you see that it's just a permutation of all of them. And the last one will be 1 times 1 times 1 times 1. Before that, it's 1 times 1 times 1 times 0. Okay. This is in binary representation. In decimal, what does it, what is this? Why is zero? How about the next one? One, how about the next one? Two, and then? What is the last one? What is the last one? I have N1, what is that? 
Just make an example. For example, say again. Two to the power n minus one. If you feel confused, just substitute n equal to two, right? It's a two power power two minus one. It's not two minus one. Okay? So I can write this as what? One over two to the power n divided by two. Summation x equal to zero to two to the power n minus one x. The main point is, it is an even superposition of all basis states. This is very important because in quantum computing, you use a lot of superposition. How do you create that? You use Hadamard gate. Uh, Two and two to the power n minus one is the value. For example, two to the power two minus one is three. Which means you have two one in binary. Yeah. Here these are all you learn in classical computer. All this register value, right? So time's up, we will stop here. Thank you.